Welcome to PDMA Corporation, home of the MC Emacs. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our presentation series. Once again, we have Noah Bethel, the Vice President of Product Development with us. Hello from sunny Tampa, Florida. And I am Todd Gunderson, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing. And Noah, thanks for coming in here. Uh, we were just talking about our, our new favorite drink, cold brew coffee. It's unbelievable. It'll change your life. It, it might. I mean, it, I got to tell you, it, I've been doing it now for the past couple of months. I don't know if I'm going to convince you to get on board with it, but it takes that acid taste out of it, gives a sweet, a, a sweet coffee flavor behind it. No real sugar needed. It's hard to believe you haven't added sweetener. I know. Anyways, I digress. So we're going to, our customers have come through for us again. Give us always. a nice case study. On, uh, in this case here, it's a high resistance connection in a motor. And this came to us from a, uh, a, a pulp and paper facility. So why don't you help us get through this? Now, this is a sodium chlorate feed pump uh, used to bleach the, the, the product, the paper, and there's no redundancy. So if you lose this, then you may lose the capacity uh, to do the uh, bleaching that's required, and thus maybe you can't produce the paper. So it's an important, critical piece of uh, equipment for this process. But it's a relatively small motor, 460 volts, 20 horsepower. So even small motors are critical, right? They are, and regardless of size, uh, if you do that criticality assessment, uh, it's what costs you the most money or the most effect. It doesn't necessarily have to be size. A lot of times it is size, of course, but it's not always the big, you know, not always is a 20 horsepower critical. And you can see here we have 44 bars, so they're good on the, uh, the uh, technicians for putting that in there. It really helps during other forms of analysis. So, Noah, this is what they have here. You can see we have a rising uh, resistive imbalance, and then it goes down after the fix. So what, what do you think causes some of this? You know, this is right in line with, as you've, you've heard our fault zone assessments and presentations throughout the, the, the many years, uh, this falls right into the power circuit uh, anomaly. Uh, we're concerned that with a resistive imbalance, that with the DC signal sent in and out through the cable runs into the windings, that there is some kind of opposition to that DC current flow. Okay, so it could be anything. It could be loose connections. It could be corrosion. Different size wires, you know, improperly sized wires. The fact that it's changing and rising between those first two tests is, is certainly it, it raises concern and, and deserves some investigation. That may, yes, that it could be getting worse. So we're going to look at the insulation as a good fundamental tool to look at all the components, all the fault zones that you had mentioned. This is the insulation. Everything looks pretty good here. Yeah, our, our polarization index test is in caution. However, the values are up around 64,000 mega ohms. We're talking 64 gig ohms. Um, you know, and, and again, it's not uh, unusual to see uh, in, in a real world environment the insulation resistance to ground uh, level off during a PI. But as long as it stays high and, and you can trend that over time, you should be good to go. So at this point, we're not gonna we're not too worried about the insulation fault zone. Correct. Now, here's the Emacs, and we always say when you see a high resistive connection through resistive imbalance, let's take, uh, correlate it with our Emacs technology. Let's see what it looks like online. But online, we're not really seeing a current imbalance, Noah. Can you explain? Yeah, and then a lot of times we, we, we hear this surprise that, you know, why isn't there a current imbalance? Shouldn't the resistance that's causing a power circuit anomaly also affect current? Keep in mind that the, the when it comes to power circuit anomalies and the EMEX, we're, we're focusing on current and voltage to be the indicator. And the reality is current is going to be, uh, if we focus on current, the AC current that's sent to in and out of these, a, these, these motors are affected by the impedance value. And the impedance value takes into account more than just resistance. So resistance is just a small element in that overall uh, impedance effect on current. So until that gets really bad, uh, the, the current's not going to be affected. And, and again, so we call that a lagging indicator for power circuit anomalies. So what you're saying is inductive reactants, uh, capacitive reactants aren't really showing any signs of change yet. So and the only thing that is changing is the resistive component in that impedance imbalance. Correct. And therefore, a minimal effect on current until it gets bad at a higher severity level, then you'll start to see it in the current. Right. You'd have to lose more windings, actually. Exactly, for the impedance and stuff to be affected. And we always focus, you know, look at thermal, look at uh, resistance values for early indicators of power circuit anomalies, and then the, the latter indicators will be the current and the voltage. Well, now they're just doing an... They, 
they took an inrush startup of this, which is usually it's at startup, but we also recommend that you do it for process analysis, just see what current is drawing on the motor. Yeah, very steady state for a centrifugal pump. This is what you'd expect. Uh, you know, it certainly you know kind of removes any machine train or or power power quality issues. So when they opened up the the uh, connection box, this is what they found. Now this is pretty pretty interesting. There's like you were saying, there's very localized heating occurring at the wire nut. But there's still ability for the current to flow because you can still see copper on here. Absolutely, you know you've got all that localized heating right at the at the point of the high resistance connection uh, that pretty much dissipates as you go further down the line, and then so the overall current flow to the motor uh, is good. You'll hear then reports that you know there's although there's no effect on the motor operation at this point, uh, there is a, a severe power circuit anomaly that needs to be addressed. Right, so it's like you throw a, a rock into a, a a very still pond or an ocean. At the point of impact, there's a lot of turbulence, so there's a lot of energy there. However, when it broadens out into the whole ocean or, or lake, it's consumed, the, the volume is so great, you don't really see that. Right, that's a great analogy. So, for this case here, they, they made the repair, but had it failed, okay, and it was on its pathway to fail, uh, it would cost approximately two thousand dollars in labor and another fifteen hundred for a crane to to uh, re replace this asset. And if they weren't able to get enough product per or, or or bleach, then maybe paper machine number one goes down, which is ten thousand dollars an hour. Now we're talking about some serious money cost. And then second paper machine would be twenty thousand per hour. That's uh, double, mm. obviously, and that's uh, much more restrictive. Uh, and in these days, you, you really cannot be affording these costs. Right. Loss of production costs are usually the dominant you know, issue with, with failures. Right. Well, that brings us to the end of this quick case study, and we certainly appreciate you guys uh, listening in. And if you have anything that you'd like to uh, share with us, please do so. If you like the video, go ahead and hit the like button. Like we said earlier, if you don't like it, then just leave it. Don't yeah, say just it don't anything. tell anybody about that. And we're going to go back, uh, drink some uh, more cold brew coffee. I've shared a little bit with Noah. I think I've, I've given him the taste of the apple. Let's see. I think I'm drawn in. <laughs> Anyways, guys, we appreciate your time, and uh, we hope to, to, we can get another case study out to you real soon. Have a great day.